Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Real Pastors. This is Efren, one half of your Real Pastors. And I'm here for a special new segment called Monster Movie Monday. And this is where, much like Gary's Westerns Wednesdays, he has his little niche. I have more with monster movies. And when I say monster movies, most of it, honestly, is kaiju movies. But today, I also am bringing on a great friend of mine who is... Um, who is a also an expert at all things monster movies and uh his name is eric and here is here he is eric say hi to everybody hi everybody uh hopefully i can bring some little bit of expertise that i have along with yeah. efren's expertise because yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes yes and i think it'll be good because where i i am more into the old cartoon shows and movies You've you've dug into more novels and comic books and such too, right? And so oh, that's where yeah. you try to. That's, at least you made the effort. That's more expertise than me. Well, I'll there's pictures involved, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Easier to read. <laughs> yes. So we are very excited to have our very first monster movie Monday, and because yes. um, it, it needs to be talked about. And like I said, this is more in the. I, I'm thinking of it more like kaiju stuff because I know technically. Frankenstein, Dracula, and all them. I know technically they are monster movies, but for me, it's like I didn't really get into those. What I got into were kaijus, and so that's where we're really going to be diving into here. And so, um, and and with the big, huge movie of Godzilla versus King Kong coming out, we thought it was very fair to dis to do a history of Godzilla because honestly, most Americans they know King Kong. I mean, King Kong was America's monster, like big, yeah. huge monster. And he, mm -hmm. and in all fairness, King Kong is probably the father of all kaiju movies. I mean, he came first, and then, you know, that inspired, uh, uh, was it Ishiro Honda, right? Oh, wait, hold on, I got it right here. Yeah, Ishiro Honda to do after, you know, the events of Hiroshima and such to do Godzilla, but he had his inspiration from King Kong. So credit where credit is due. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but, but yeah, we got Godzilla. Here's what's funny though, and I think you agree with this, Eric. Is even though God, God, uh, King Kong is a father, Godzilla ended up being the king of monsters and ended up being probably even more popular worldwide than King Kong. Oh yeah, everybody. I mean, even my three year old, four year old now, Godzilla. Like I haven't sat down and said, okay, kiddo, like these are the kaiju and blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. Godzilla, she knows, you know, and that sort of stuff. So just that name alone is, it's, you know, God yeah. Godzilla. <laughs> everybody yeah. knows. It. Yeah, well, I mean, just across all kinds of mediums, whether it be music, other movies, others, I feel like someone's always referencing mm -hmm. Godzilla. I mean, they reference King Kong too, but it's just like Godzilla just went in yeah, a whole yeah. new direction. You know, all. Blue Oyster Cult, oh, uh, Cult, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, no, there goes Tokyo. Go, go, Godzilla. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll bust out the guitar later if you want. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be pretty epic. We probably would need that at some point. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You know, anyway. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's, we're going to dig in to, to the G man himself, mm -hmm. to the King of the monsters. And, um, I know I had showed this, uh, to people last time, but I went to criterion.com and they had oh, the nice. Blu-ray of the original, the original Japanese version and the American version. And, Very um, nice. so I never got to actually watch the Japanese version. So I got that bad boy out. Mm -hmm. And, um, and for those of you who may have never actually seen a picture of that classic Godzilla. There he is. Yep, there he is. And uh, very, but it was funny because I was showing my oldest daughter, Sayla, this, and she was like, he doesn't look very scary. I was like, you got to realize at the time, that was pretty frightening. Oh, yeah, you know, this big old <laughs> lizard that comes out of the ocean. And just, rah. Yeah, my, uh, my middle daughter, uh, she was asking like, Dad, Godzilla's the bad guy, right? And I was like, no. He's just misunderstood. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sayla asked me the same thing. She's like, who's oh. the good guy? Who's the bad guy? But she's thinking King Kong versus Godzilla. Right. And I was right. like, well, in the original movie, which this one would be, mm -hmm. he was the bad guy. Mm -hmm. But like beyond that, he in turned into a hero. And then him and King Kong had a huge battle. And that was kind of, uh, you know, we'll get into that later. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think about, <laughs> yeah, but a lot of times, and listen, uh, Toho and all them, they did a great job with, the, the character and with all the movies that they did and they mm -hmm. turned him into this hero and this icon but this original movie again this is supposed to supposed to be um you know just just a um was a commentary on what happened with hiroshima with the atomic bomb and yep. atomic testing that was going on um in uh, in that area i forgot the name of it the actual name of it 
uh, with the U.S. even doing testing and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. the, you know, this allegory, that's the word. There's supposed to be this allegory about that that's going on and then just how much destruction that kind of atomic power brings. And so in yeah. this movie, we see Godzilla just wreaking havoc mm -hmm. across the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so uh, had, do you ever get a chance to watch this one, like the Japanese version? <sighs> A long time ago, uh, I like even before doing this, I was like, "Oh, I need to sit down because I like you showed or whatever you had, mm -hmm. you know, Godzilla versus or Kong versus Godzilla." And uh, I'd watched, you know, you know, like as a kid growing up, you've watched them yeah. and all this stuff, but you, I don't remember all the detail. But you know, as things go, it'll probably click up. But I haven't, I haven't seen that the original in like forever. So I was wanting to like jump on mm -hmm. there and start watching them some stuff, and I'll get through it too. As you know, we do more of the stuff and get back into the swing of things, but. I was going to sit right. down and watch it. And then me and the wife ended up planning a vacation or something instead. So <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. cause there's just, there's just tons of Godzilla and that's, what's great about this character. And uh, yeah. what was it? It's just, like one of those silly TV channels. that always has like something going on. Uh, we sat down and I was like, Oh yeah. Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. And it started in the wife yeah. rolls her eyes. And I was like, no, no, no we're watching this. <laughs> yes. So yeah. yeah and man. it just, it is, there's just so much material and, it, and there really has like, I get what are we up to? Three gener generations, three different iterations of Godzilla. Like we have the, we have you know, and then like kind of uh, the kind of sequel that they made, and mm -hmm. then and then you also have the rest of Toho stuff where they turn him into a hero, but then mm -hmm. they come back and when was it in 1984? They have another generation of Godzilla stuff. So I mean, they went through like 60 something or 70 something, and then they have they came back in the 80s, had another stint, and mm -hmm. then. Um, you know, and then now we have this newer legendary and Toho partnership. Yeah. Uh, but we have oh. now Godzilla. And I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. As much as like, you know, I've even, did you ever watch that Marvel 616 I was telling you about? Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Just, I so forgot. just how Japan was just ahead of the, t uh, you know, just ahead of everything in technology and how they did stuff with, you know, film and, you know, the action and stuff. Of course, you know, we have to pay, you know, just tribute and give the love to, you know, the actors that put on the suits. And mm -hmm. like I was texting you the other day, I was like, I wonder if they actually like, just had like an idea of the fight or they just said, all right, well, here's this room and don't touch that, but just, you know, push each other around and do all this stuff. Right. Um, but you know, to see what we're giving you and it, how it just the gears of the imagination start rolling because of those actors and how they brought, you mm -hmm. know, the Kaiju to life and everything. And here we are now and we get to have this, you know, the crazy technology that we do to get to see these monsters larger than life. Uh, you know, how they, really compare into the size of like a town and to other creatures and all this stuff and getting to see them like move authentically, if that makes sense yeah. <laughs> versus, you know, the, yeah. the hand motions of what us humans are able to do in these suits or whatnot. So yeah, really excited to see, you know, and I, I'm, I'm trying not to jump ahead of stuff, but to see yeah. how, you know, this legendary, you know, system and stuff just moves these monsters forward. And cause yeah. uh, they, there's a, I'm sure you've seen it too. They want to keep going after, you know, of course, Godzilla versus Kong, and we'll get into that. But yeah, yeah man. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and it is true. I mean, you got to think too. Not only were they limited to what the actors can do as human, but with human bodies, but they were limited to what they could do in that suit as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So, like, there's just a lot of limitations. But at the time, like, uh, like even the original King Kong, for instance, they use like that claymation kind mm -hmm. of animation to like make yep. it work. Yeah, and so. And so when you go back and look at it now, it looks a little silly. silly. Again, at the yeah, it was like groundbreaking what they were able to do. But then oh, yeah. doing this with Godzilla just mm -hmm. pushed it even further. And um, and we're talking like uh, King Kong was 1936, and this was yeah, and this was 40 whatever, 42, 43. Hold on, I know I have it around here somewhere. Hold on, I, like, I should have wrote down the the notes or oh, no. the times as well. But yeah, yeah, 1954. My bad. I was so 36 for King Kong, but 54 for this original Godzilla that we have the picture yeah. for. And mm -hmm. I mean, at the time, this stuff was groundbreaking. Oh and yeah, it, and it really because again, we had those other movies of Dracula and stuff that were happening, but mm -hmm. the monster movie explosion you really see happen with these two titans, if you will, which yep. is fitting why we're once again getting this the two biggest. You know, monster icons going head to head. Oh yeah, up. it was bound. It was bound to happen, man. The the idea and you know, hearing them say, "Let them fight." Oh yeah. Hang on, I got a kid. It oh, happens. She's outside. Close <laughs> the door, please. Okay. Yeah. And for all those okay, who watch this channel, you're used to this Thank kind you. of stuff. Kids yeah. popping in, wife popping in. <laughs> Welcome to our channel. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. 
But so, yeah, man, it, it was only a matter of time before, you know, the, the whole phrase of let them fight, you know, really meant the two big guns of the kaiju mm-hmm. world and bringing them to the big screen and trying to figure out where I can go watch it on an IMAX or something because, yeah. I don't know, 55-inch TV doesn't do it too much justice. <laughs> no, none at all. Yes, you need to find an IMAX screen as possible. Uh, so, But yeah, but that is that is our boys. That is Godzilla's humble beginnings. Mm-hmm. And, um, but then, like we said, after that, they they did have like a rush, kind of a rush sequel after mm-hmm. the original Godzilla, which was kind of like, uh, they're just trying to, I mean, it really was like, oh, we can make money off this because we made a lot. Let's exactly. Do a so a lot of people don't know about quick. it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people kind of forgot about it, which is fine. But then, you, but then you end up going in and you end up switching to, um, uh, to the next generation is pretty much just how I'm kind of talking about it, I guess. And mm-hmm. um, let's see, let me make sure I have. Oh, here we go. Make sure I pull up the right picture here. Yeah. But there then we, we go. have. Then we have this one. This is the Godzilla most people are familiar with. Mm-hmm. with this generation. I mean, you see right there in the background. You see Ghidorah. You yep. see Mega Godzilla. And this is where. The majority of people, if they have some kind of, you know, past with Godzilla or or if anything, if they at least going to recognize him, this is the generation that most of the lore, but pretty much all the lore and everything comes from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is this is the Godzilla that you like we spoke about previously and stuff. When I was a kid, you know, you, you watch all these things. But this is the Godzilla that chased me around for I kid you guys not. It was a two week um, like nightmare or something, if you will. It was just a recurring dream. I was a little kid being chased by Godzilla for two weeks, but that's that's the that's the kaiju right there who did yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, that's him. <laughs> and go from villain to hero because the world needs him because all these other now kaiju's are are coming out of their slumber, if you will. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're now these ancient creatures that used to rule the earth before before even dinosaurs were on the earth. And now they're coming out and they're fighting. And Mega Godzilla is a totally different storyline. But yeah, we'll again, there's just him. all these kaiju's. I mean, even Ghidorah is kind of different. But uh, mm-hmm. but what, what, what's what's kind of been like your history there, Eric, with with this man right here? Uh, probably this this guy that we're staring at. I remember, like I said, being a kid and my dad was just watching it, and uh, I was laughing to myself the other day because I was remembering like how they fought and like sometimes when there's multiple multiple you know kaiju around like they're like Mm -hmm. taking turns almost like fight each other and i remember having my action figures all set up and kind of mimicking (laughs) the same like action sequences and stuff like that and uh joke around my wife because she's like oh you're you're a a rich kid growing up and i was like i was a deprived rich kid i didn't have (laughs) you know everything so i was like wanting these godzilla godzilla figures and never really got them and i was looking around today and i only got my you know my box back here of the recent board game and I was mm-hmm. like, oh man, I don't really have any Godzilla, you know, representation. Um, yeah. But these guys here, um, growing up seeing, you know, that that original fight with Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla, uh, Ghidorah, and everything like that. Uh, my buddy, for some reason, brainwashed me wrong, and he's like, no, it's Girdra. And I was like, I thought it was Ghidorah, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and just all those fights with them, and you know, getting to know Mothra, and you know, some there's so many other you know kaiju that like I still scratch the surface on some of them, but mm-hmm. this was like for me, you know. And I know a lot of people, like you said, this this guy right here was the one who really, again, got the imagination open, um, mm-hmm. terrified you into such a, a cool creature that, again, was this this crazy figure who was a bad guy at first, but then mm-hmm. you love him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he ended up being a bad guy, but then he ended up being the one who needed to save Earth from all these other giant monsters, which was kind of mm-hmm. funny. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, so was he actually like, was he actually like I am Earth's protector, or was he like get off my lawn? Like I really don't know <laughs> what, where Godzilla was on this, but either way, he took everyone uh, to task. So yeah, maybe at first it was that because you know he's always just trying to sleep or he's just chilling or something yeah. like that, and, he gets and then all of a sudden, and yeah, and something's going on, and he's like, oh, what's going on? Oh, I have to fight you now, and now yeah. you and you, and you know now I guess yeah, he's like, I'll do it, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing I found funny, which we'll get into later, I guess, but. With the newer Godzilla, it's like, yeah, some of yeah, these, yeah. some of these are benevolent. I'm like, are they though? Because mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure Godzilla is just t- is an old grumpy old man who got woke up from his nap and he's trying to get people off his property. Like that's yeah, yeah, yeah. like, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's yeah, almost like the uh, <laughs> it's almost like the incredible setup where he's like, we just cleaned up this place. Can you just leave it clean for ten minutes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, but man. Yeah. Uh, those. 
just seeing those kaiju and what they did and you know how they just again opened the imagination and just brought us into this world where again we're, we get to see some of these monsters like recreated and you know brought to life with the bigger you know scope of stuff like i was laughing at mothra um just because like yeah she was a big thing in the old ones yeah. but now it's just this radiant creature it took up like her yeah. the wingspan took up like everything and all that but just kind of seeing like again we get to put that on the special effect spectrum and Mm-hmm. you know bring that to life more <laughs> yeah yeah and, and and like i know with this like i just enjoyed digging into this side of the history of godzilla so much because you mm-hmm. know again the original is what we already talked about the original godzilla with what it was meant to do but yeah. then when they bring this Set out the stage yeah mm-hmm. and, but the thing is there never really was like was he created because of the atomic test or like how did he come about there was no background he just he was almost joker-esque he just showed up ripped yeah. habit and needed to be destroyed and that was it mm-hmm. and and then here now you're starting to get background on him and other monsters and where they possibly could have came from what what awakens them what brings them yeah. out and then you have the development of, of monarch trying to figure out how to handle all these different kaijus because they're just like here's reality mm-hmm. we're we're living in a world with these giant monsters yeah they're here and we're just <laughs> a part of it yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And um, so, yeah, and there's just a lot of, like you said, a lot of history. And I think, you know, don't feel too bad about the lack of toys, like what you were saying. Because I remember, <laughs> remember, I had, cool. I remember I had plenty of toys. I had this nice set and mm-hmm. it was Godzilla versus King Ghidorah. So I nice. had the two toys and everything. And they had, and they had these buildings that were put on top of these like little spring loaded things. So when Godzilla mm-hmm. hits it, they blow up and like all the little tanks. I don't have any of that stuff anymore. And it hurts uh. my heart. Like, oh, I don't know who Dora is. I don't know where he, I've been asking my parents, is this anywhere? And it hurts my heart. So, of course, I've been trying to buy new uh, Godzilla stuff, but it hurts well, dude, my heart. I don't have any of that stuff. Yeah, like you said, when I was down at that one um, comic shop, they just had like a little section of Godzilla, and I was like, yeah. aww. <laughs> yeah. So, total side note before we get on, I think you and I just need to go to Japan and go t- see all the Godzilla like museum yes. and everything that they have there. We just need to do that one day. Yeah, we're just gonna do it. We won't even tell the wives. We'll just disappear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they'll be. Yeah, yeah, they they'll knew be it was fine. A matter of time. <laughs> yeah, they'll figure it out. So, uh, um, any more historical stuff you want to throw in here with this with this era that that uh, that you either grew up with or stuff you found pretty awesome? Anything uh, are we like gonna, that? Are we gonna get to the original cartoon? So, oh yes, yes. Okay. That which which I'm throw, <laughs> which I'm throwing in this. I'm glad you yeah. reminded. I'm, I want to throw it in this because this is this generation. So. Mm-hmm. So we have oh, no, no, yeah. Do you want yeah. to set it up for? <laughs> oh, go ahead. You go ahead, sir. You already. Oh no, that was that was the other thing, man. Like, what was was that Hanna Barbera? Now I'm trying to remember because it was that Hanna Barbera style. I think it was, yeah. Like Scooby Doo meets uh, Godzilla, and I was explaining it to the, my girls the other day, and uh, we had uh, your uh, what your uh, kind of clone, or you know the your uh, what's what's the term? Your doppelganger uh, was over yeah. uh, uh, oh, Melvin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're like, you know, I was telling them about the, you know, the the theme song and how Godzilla is only animated to do like certain things, and like, and Godzuki would come out and stuff, and like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I grew up grew up watching that show, and like, oh no, we need Godzilla, and you know, oh no, the ship's in mm-hmm. trouble again, and oh, uh, here comes Godzilla, and Rawr! and of course, Godzuki. <laughs> yeah, and Godzuki. <laughs> Where, I always remember exactly. that theme theme song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like yeah. twenty stories high, you know, Godzilla, and then you know, and yeah. Godzuki, <laughs> and he comes flying in, or yeah, anyway, <laughs> all goofy and such. Because mm-hmm. they did honestly, they kept they kept it. Because even with the movies, I know later on these movies got a little silly, but I remember mm-hmm. with the cartoon they try to keep it a little bit more serious with Godzilla, but they let yeah. Godzuki be like the goofy the goofy Godzilla. Oh yeah, he was like that scrappy cartoon, dude, you know, let yeah. me at him or like go get him, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which also brings up during this generation, he had Baby Godzilla, mm-hmm. which that's a whole, <laughs> a whole other thing that I just can't help but laugh at. But you know, it yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. So it's it a part of the, the dinosaurs. I'm the baby. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've been watching that on Disney Plus because. <laughs> oh, nice! I I love that freaking show, but <laughs> um, but yeah, so you have him here, and then, and I guess like another thing that I just loved about this this generation is. To me, I feel like there's just so much creativity behind these directors and just them mm-hmm. trying to, or the screenwriters trying to find a newer, bigger foe that's going to push Godzilla to the limit. You know, yeah. it's, it, it kind of felt like Batman and his rogues gallery and, you know, every villain pushed him further, further. It's like, this is what's kind of happened with Godzilla. It's like, he keeps getting pushed further and further. And then 
you know, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla, like you see mm -hmm. there in the background. Um, yeah. I mean, at first, you know, I, at first they thought it was actual Godzilla because Mecha Godzilla had his skin. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. um, uh, what's his name? The, the spiky looking, oh, I forgot his name. It just, his name just escaped me. There's the, a couple different guys. Yeah. And I was like, I know I'm going to forget names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it happens. we'll have to, you know, for research and stuff later, we'll have those all, you know, situated. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember he comes out and he tries to fight, you know, what is Mecha Godzilla and he gets worked and then yeah. Godzilla comes out, but Godzilla loses at first and he has to come back and, um, he really got pushed to his limits. And then of course, Mega Godzilla kept coming back because they kept building him better and better. Right, um, right. I mean, things get a little wo wonky because it's like aliens from out of space, make it to help earth. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, they got to some alien nonsense, but everyone knows who Mega Godzilla is. I mean, mm -hmm. at the very least they saw it in ready player one. So it yeah. showed up in that movie. So it means something. Sorry. I got a kid trying to come in again. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> uh, but uh but yeah you have ready player one and people at least know mega godzilla from that and yeah um and at this point is where he really just becomes this icon mm -hmm. and now he's really like again a worldwide icon still not huge in the states but around the world he was yeah yeah and that's another thing too like we we always like say you know the states or whatnot like japan and, and all their history and their culture and stuff a lot of these monsters are based off of you know some of that culture and you know idea and everything uh you know history and all that stuff in japan so like you said godzilla just has a plethora of you know different kaiju who are just like hey i'm fighting this guy today you know ding 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 next up this yeah. week godzilla versus you know this guy and then it's like that guy <laughs> yeah. tag team matchups and all that stuff um the one thing too like uh, another little side note is just watching like uh, again japan and how they just did stuff like you know, as a kid, you have the Mecha Godzilla, but at the same time, you know, I'll, I'll probably get hated or whatever. But you know, you're, you're thinking also you got Mecha Godzilla, and then you got the Dragon Zord because they kind of like use yeah. the same <laughs> quirkiness yeah. and doo -doo 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 from the fingers and all that stuff. And you know, yeah. I just remember watching those, and then you know, the Power Rangers come out, and I'm like, oh, cool. But you see how they used all the different technology yes. or just you know the effects and stuff like that. You know, just branched off and everything. And still, yeah. like you said, seeing that fight, you know, with Mecha Godzilla the first time, and just you know, the skin and everything and how that was and punching the head off and yeah. all that stuff later on. You're like, oh man, and how he's still fighting and just like, dude, just sit down already, man. But he just kept yeah. on going. <laughs> yeah, which is even Push Godzilla just showed him how much more of a boss he is and how he, again, earns that title of King of the Monsters because of everything <laughs> that he goes through. And um, and, I'm, and I'm glad you, you even brought up uh, like the Dragon Zord and stuff because, <laughs> I mean, and for those, just quick side note, for those who don't know this, original Power Rangers, all the fight scenes and the Zord scenes were the original Japanese versions, and they mm -hmm. just refilmed the American people here. That's what happens a lot. They did it with Godzilla movies. They do this all the time. They'll take the Japanese stuff that they don't have to reshoot, and they don't reshoot it, and they yeah. reuse stuff. Mm -hmm. And But what I want to dig into is the having giant monsters or giant robots is just is just so a part of Japanese culture. If you look mm -hmm. at Gundam, and if you look at just, I mean, uh, Gundam, obviously Godzilla, Power Rangers mm -hmm. stuff, um, Voltron, there's just so much that there's all giant monsters or giant robots that are constantly fighting. This is just so deeply rooted in Japanese culture. And yeah. even if you go back to Godzilla, Godzilla helped start all that and helped start that fandom of these giant, you know, larger than life beings or robots that are out there, you know, fighting in yeah. the world. So I, I can Ooh. see you're fighting at the bit. Go ahead, sir. Well, well again, because like, you know, getting into, I should have just made you watch episode one of the 616. It talks again about yeah. the Japanese Spider-Man and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Well, long story short, we can make this a sub episode or whatnot if you want. But, um, you know, Marvel Comics and stuff wasn't doing very good over in Japan. So they're trying to get it to appeal, you know, to the culture over there. Uh, so Stanley talked to the guy who got it all going and was like, okay, cool. Here's Spider-Man. Do what you want with him, but only in Japan and make sure it doesn't get to the States where we finally, you know, as you'll learn 2009 or whatever, we finally got, you know, Japanese Spider-Man. Right. But like you're saying, Japanese Spider-Man gave us the first transforming Zord and like mm -hmm. what ultimately would be, you know, these giant mechs and these people in these suits and stuff like that, because Spider-Man was almost like a Power Ranger by himself yeah. <laughs> back in the day yeah. in Japan. But, you know, like you're saying, with all the technology and stuff, seeing, um, you know, the, the actors don the suits and all that stuff. Next thing you know, there's these giant, you know, monsters, rah, and you know they have to transform or get in these mechs to fight these things. And you see the tanks on the strings and all that stuff, you know. Yeah. And 
um, just how the technology, it all worked together. And here we are in America, like scratching our heads, like, what is this stuff? And yeah. Japan, you know, they were, even with all the action figures and stuff that they had, you know, we had like little cheesy things or whatever, but they had like transforming machines. Well, like I said, we'll get into other stuff there, but to see how, um, you know, like you're talking about, I'm, I'm getting carried away, but how Japan was just awesome and figuring out all this stuff. And of course, you know, we got mm-hmm. Godzilla and, you know, Power Rangers and all this stuff. Transformers. You know, yeah. Oh yeah. Transformers I mean, was a whole different thing. Like they were just yeah. toys and then they brought them over here and then our guys made a story and gave them a name and all this stuff. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> it still started in Japan. That's still where it all started. Yeah. They thanks. They still Japan. had that partnership with Marvel. So it all, mm-hmm. it all ties in there. So I think I told you this, man, we're sitting there at the end of uh, what was it? End game. And my daughter and my oldest daughter, she's like, dad, wouldn't it be cooler? Like more epic if the transformers were a part of this. And I was like, ah. <laughs> and oh, there's a chance that it, they could have been the Marvel universe, but we'll digress yeah. on a transformers yeah. episode. On Sorry. Day. Back to Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no, no. This, I'm right. You know how we are with transformers. Yeah. Too. We're right there with yeah. you. So that, that'll need to be another, uh, Hey, cause honestly, I mean, technically transformers are, Monster, giant monsters to mm-hmm. the humans, so that would fit in with all this kind of stuff that we could dig into another day. Yeah. But, but still, it, to tie it back to Godzilla, like you said, it mm-hmm. all started with him in yeah. Japan. It he mm-hmm. had to exist first, and then these movies continued to get put, uh, punched out. They continue to, uh, you know, just raise not awareness, but raise a uh, hype. That's the word. That yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they kind of raise all this hype, and did, I mean, these money, these movies made a ton of money in Japan. Oh yeah. yeah, so he killed it, man. And it was this like, guy yeah. just becomes, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. He just becomes a larger than life icon, and it's just, and this is where he really makes his name is in this generation. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, <laughs> I know, and it's just like, man, where do we start to begin to even talk about this guy? Because it's like, you know, let's just go on because I feel like with me, we can really dig into more lore and stuff once we get to uh, current Godzilla. But we do yeah. need to take a quick side, a quick side. To the history of Godzilla, and this won't take long because there's really not much to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but unfortunately, there is this guy as well, which was 1998. Is that right? Yeah, 98, was, 99, 2000. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, somewhere around, around there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, somewhere around there. I mean, to, to this guy's credit, he we did have some of the coolest Taco Bell commercials. Um, oh yeah, because of him. <laughs> but uh, but this is a guy that now you know G fans just mm-hmm. call him Zilla. Even mm-hmm. though in the movie and all that, the title of the movie is called Godzilla. This was America's attempt to make Godzilla in their version. First attempt to make Godzilla in their version yeah. and to try yeah. to make Godzilla a thing here in America. But, uh, you know, Eric, how about you just go ahead and start it? Because I, I may need to gather my, my angry thoughts here first. I was going to say, I'm, I'm uh, uh, where do I go from here? <laughs> I think you, yeah. you covered it. No, I, yeah. I still remember being a kid and walking out of whatever movie we're watching and seeing <laughs> the cardboard cut out of, uh, what was it? Was it the Zilla that they had or like an egg or whatnot? It, it, was, and it was just like Godzilla. Well, they, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they had, they had one that was an egg and they had one that was just like his spine and his tail. So they were really trying to like not show him through the commercials right. and stuff. Or through marketing right and i think that like i said the the egg one comes to mind and i remember walking out and just looking at it going like hmm <laughs> what do we have here because you know we grew up with the original the guys that were just kind of you know having on screen here and stuff and you have like that's godzilla man and then they give us uh, this the, the, mm-hmm. this guy on green screen <laughs> they give us this guy yeah, and yeah. i i'll be honest i still haven't watched the whole thing <laughs> of this movie <laughs> um I really enjoyed the silly cartoon that we got on Fox. Um, Cause again, I thought like that I said, was, I was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was more into, you know, the, the, the anime and all that stuff around this time. So when Godzilla came to like the animated stuff, I was like, Oh cool. You know, I'll watch that real quick. And yeah, every Saturday morning, this is what we got. And it wasn't bad, but again, growing up knowing Godzilla, who he was and how he is. And then America gets their hands on it. And yes, I love this country, but sometimes, uh, <laughs> uh, this <laughs> yeah. or wherever he is that yeah. uh you know we get zilla and stuff like that it was it was an attempt that maybe started the fire for you know some nerds or whatnot who needed a kaiju in their life <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. and maybe you know zilla was able to do that <laughs> yeah like yeah i mean yeah. like i'll be honest like this came out i think i was in sixth grade or something mm-hmm. whenever it came out and so like i went and so i remember i was excited to see it because we already had jurassic park and like the lost world 
And yeah. so it was just another giant reptile, Godzilla. And they would just call Godzilla. So I was already excited for that. And I mm-hmm. remember walking out of it thinking like, oh, I, I kind of like, like, I liked it. Like, again, a sixth grader. All right. What do I know? But like, <laughs> like I came out liking it. But then as I got older and kept watching it, I was just like, I, I ended up getting more and more angry because I'm like, if they would have just called this something else entirely, if they just didn't call it Godzilla, I feel like it would have been a much better movie. But the fact that you call it Godzilla and like the history, like we've already talked about, that is tied mm-hmm. to that name. Like th- that, this isn't it. What you see, oh crap, I just did it. What you see here yeah, yeah, yeah. is not the man. <laughs> yeah. that, that, is, that is not Godzilla. Now this is why he's now known as Zilla. Cause it yeah. was like this, this, this isn't, that's, that's not him. And, and the, you know, the whole story plot of, well, he's, I mean, at least they got the atomic nuclear testing thing, right? And mm-hmm. that's how he was, he came to be. I mean, he's essentially a giant deformed iguana. Yeah, yeah, important. yeah. But then he has to like travel to lay eggs and all this stuff. And it's like, what is happening? Like, this mm-hmm. is, this is not Godzilla. You can call it, if they would have just said giant random monster. That would have been a much better <laughs> movie than what, it, what we got. Because again, that name carries so much weight. And you couldn't yeah. do this. You couldn't do that. Yeah, I and agree. So, I, 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 yeah, if they would have just called a giant radioactive lizard guy, or yeah, I don't even, whatever. or even just the lizard. <laughs> like I would have been fine yeah. with that. <laughs> like the lizard. All right, cool. And then like it ends up. But I was with you. I thought the animated series was way better than the actual mm-hmm. movie. And I, I, I did watch that every Saturday. I thought the animated series was great. Because it pretty yeah. much is the same thing the old Godzilla animated series that we talked about earlier did. Yeah. Is, oh, oh man, there's a giant monster. Come out here yeah. and fight him. And they fight him and he goes off. And it was sweet. So it was mm-hmm. good. A Scooby-Doo-esque kind of like, oh no, it's a bad guy. You know, like, yeah. who is it today? <laughs> yeah. A radioactive armadillo that grew 20 stories tall. And pew, 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 pew. Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, but hey, that was still way better than the movie. I will say that. Because it just, yeah. they're just... But, but that it just like it just didn't work. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'll still watch it. I'll probably still show it to my girls because, I, and I might just say this is this is Zilla. This movie's called Zilla. It just means mm-hmm. lizard, and we'll just leave it at. Um, yeah. But so then, so then from here, because I mean, I heard a story once. Or I read a story once where they talked about how Toho was excited that that America was trying to do this, and yeah. then when they saw the product, they were like, uh, uh-uh. uh. And then they did yeah, yeah. the. Uh, what was it, Godzilla 2000, I think it was, where he comes mm-hmm. out and beats the crap out of this Zilla. And mm-hmm. it was like, mm-hmm. you're nothing, man. Like, this is nothing at all. Yeah. Yeah. I was breathing, bringing to life, you know, the character that we, we deserve and we truly need. It. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, and then, which, and, and then this is where, and I think this is where we can talk a little more because now, because we've been trying not to spoil ourselves. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is where we can really start to just dig into because now we are at our um, at our current Godzilla that we have, which is legendary, yeah. the legendary okay, Godzilla okay. in partnership with Toho. Um, mm-hmm. So, which is probably how they should have done the Zilla one, anyways. They should have partnered with Toho to do it right. But now yeah. we have this American version of Godzilla, but tied to his roots, tied to mm-hmm. his lore and his history, but done with you know, people who helped create it and have been a part of the story of Godzilla forever. And then now we have this great monster verse that's happening, at least yes. in my opinion, great monster verse. Uh, I think the first Godzilla was okay. I just, I mean, I, I get what Garth Edwards, the director was trying to do. He was trying to pay a lot of homage to the original Godzilla, you know, this one, the original Japanese. Um, yeah. I know he was trying to do that. Um, it just, the human character sucked in it. So that's why it was kind of, <laughs> eh, you know, yeah. but, um, but listen, if you're going to spend that much time on the human characters, make them interesting. That's all I was right. asking. Right. But um, but then we had Kong Skull Island. Then we had King of the Monsters. And to me, they blew it out of the water with those two. Um, yeah. But um, but I know for me, with this new iteration of it, the fact that they are getting directors who, one, are actual fan of Godzilla and his history and everything mm-hmm. tied to it. I mean, the fact that they're really trying to make sure they tie in the Japanese roots and tie in the storylines, uh, I think has made it way better. Oh yeah. More authentic. And you're like seeing the creatures, you know, come to come together and come to life on the screen. And, you know, they're saying little phrases or whatever. And you're like, Oh, oh, oh I feel more at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just know which, like, Oh, go uh, ahead. Oh, please go ahead. 
Oh no, I was just Efren knows like I my schedule as a mailman and this and that. Like I always he's like, dude, you gotta watch this movie or dude this yeah. and that. I'm like, okay, I'll get to it. So just a week and a half ago, I got to finally sit down and watch King of Monsters and they threw in the oxygen destroyer and I was like, Yes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Again, the you know, that those terms and you know, Godzilla, you know, actually coming together yeah. in these movies and yeah. you know. <laughs> Or even so, that even Doctor uh, Iwazawa, like having mm -hmm. him, like yeah. in it from the beginning, you know. And I thought mm -hmm. that was that was just again a great paid homage back to the original, which is what Garth Edwards did with it. He had him in it, and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he's saying King of the Monsters, like they're having these people tied in, having these characters tied in that you end up seeing um, mm -hmm. develop through this. And that's like in uh, King of the Monsters, you know, if you haven't oh. seen it, spoilers, pause it, go yeah. watch King of the yeah, Monsters, yeah, yeah, yeah. and come back. <laughs> That's your chance. Okay, so mm -hmm. moving right along, King of the Monsters. When you know Doctor Doctor Iwazawa dies, it was like, ah oh, man, yeah, he's supposed to like that's he's supposed to sacrifice himself, you know, for the for the greater good. Yes, was I don't it know if we can see him, but yeah, the the goosebumps because yeah, when he's sitting there and he's activating the nuke and he's ready to go and he walks up to Godzilla and he's like, goodbye, old friend, you know, and he like opens his eyes like, what? I was like, oh, it's so good. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> well, like I love that moment too because go goodbye, old friend was like on two different levels. It was in this current monster verse, goodbye, old friend. But even the mm -hmm. goodbye, old friend from original, I mean, he sacrificed himself in the original, you know, 1954 mm -hmm. one. But like yeah. the fact that this that character, you know, Dr. Rizal was tied with Godzilla over all these years and mm -hmm. just this he, final, he like, carries, okay, yeah, we're done it. with this guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that just ah. made it all the better. And I think that's what people are missing. Um, because I don't know a single Godzilla fan who did not like King of the Monsters. Right. Everyone I know, but the people who don't know the history, and this is where we can mm -hmm. really start digging into stuff, is I think they don't appreciate how much effort they put into King of the Monsters to pay homage back with Ghidorah, mm -hmm. with Mothra, like I said, with, with Dr. I uh, Iwazima, with Dr. Um, or not, um, with Urizawa. him, with Iwazawa, mm -hmm. and then also like the Oxygen Destroyer, just mm -hmm. everything that they're doing and tying in, and even with Monarch, to just say, like, listen, the history is important. Like, we don't really have to rewrite too much. All, all they really have to do is rewrite to make it make more sense today. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you're still talking about these giant monsters that will never exist. So you have to dispend a little bit of disbelief. <laughs> um, yeah, just a little. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that's what, they're, that's what they're doing a really good job with it is, like, th they're getting people who know their stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. even the even the score. You had the original oh, Godzilla yeah. Godzilla song, and you had the Mothra song, and Ghidorah, and like it's just it has just been great to see them. Okay, we're going to keep pulling from history to mm -hmm. bring it today to light, so even more people can be caught up into the story of Godzilla and who this character is. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, dude, and music music plays such a uh, you know a, a, like you go back to you know your Superman theme and then Star Wars and stuff these characters have that breath of life in their own theme songs and stuff like that. So yeah. like you said, to hear it coming back, you know, full circle into where we're at now and you're just like, Oh man. And then Godzilla roars. I can't mimic that, that one, but you know, you got that going and it's just like, again, goosebumps of just what this, what this dude is, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I know. And this was, I mean, so, so, I mean, I know you say you like, you love King of the Monsters, Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about the the uh, 2017 the Garth Edwards Godzilla? Because I don't remember what you had said about that one. Okay, because that was I was going to say uh, yeah. How do you want to do this if we're going back to that one? That's the one we had yeah. saw together, right? Me, you, and Ricardo. So yeah, 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 yeah. I I was going to ask you the same question. I I loved it. I know at first people were making fun of the design of Godzilla because he was kind of big and again Chunky, like yeah. Yeah, you know, again, he's not this dude in a suit where you can kind of fill him out a little bit more with the animation and stuff like that. I loved it. I mean, I love that we're finally, you know, you and I've had these talks about the Transformers and stuff, but to see these larger than life creatures, individuals, you know, being drawn the scale, if you will, and put together and, you know, interacting with things. Of course, the human storyline is always going to be kind of cheesy, but always. I loved it. Like everything with Godzilla himself and uh, what was it? The Mutos and all that stuff, getting to see yeah. them actually like just throw down and Mm, all that stuff and when he puts his you know big old foot in the mud you know i was like yes yeah. <laughs> and then he just starts you know beating stuff i i thought it was great man again getting to see godzilla 
in that light, you know, finally coming back, <laughs> going to the house should have ended with uh, all that stuff in my head. But yeah, man, that was my take on it. I, I loved it. Everything down to, you know, just seeing him throw things around the, the way ah, atomic breath <laughs> right. and everything. So yeah, right. that was me. I, I, I really enjoyed it. What about you? I know yeah. we were in the same theater, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I just remember walking out and I, I like, I was like, man, it, to me, I came out of it thinking, I came out of it thinking like, oh man, like, when Godzilla was on screen, it was absolutely fantastic. Yes. And I was just like, I loved everything. Every time Godzilla was on the screen or, what, or even the Mutos, when the monsters mm-hmm. were on screen, especially when Godzilla, I thought it was great. I just, I just lost interest with the human characters because to me, it was like, all right, we're going to do this next. And they didn't do it. Okay, let's do yeah. this next. And they didn't do it. Like, I just felt like the human characters literally just did nothing. And yeah. I was like, but, and then since we spent so much time with them, that's, I was like, oh my gosh, just get back to Godzilla. Like, can we get to, what mm-hmm. I'm here for. And I remember that was, that's why I was just like, it was, it was okay. Like it wasn't like, Oh, it was so amazing because again, like you said, the human characters are going to be cheesy. They always have been uh, for, for exception of the original, you know, Japanese Godzilla, the mm-hmm. characters are going to be cheesy. Um, yeah. And that's just kind of what it turned into, but it, it was just, but at least in all those movies, the human characters did something, whether it was a stupid decision or a good decision, <laughs> they still did something. Like what, something humans making happen. decisions stupidly. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but I remember that was it. But then, you know, of course, hey, this is going to be a monster verse. Next is Kong Skull Island. Saw that, loved it. Thought, I loved their take on it. And then King of the Monsters yes. came out, and I was like, King of the Monsters is the movie that I have been waiting for to see. As you said, larger than life, new special effects, new technology. Seeing how this would pan out, even and I know a lot of people gave King of the Monsters uh, grief for it was just so much destruction. It was just too. It was just overdone. It was exaggerated. I'm like, you have these giant monsters fighting each other in a city. Like, how yeah, is this? Yeah. How, what do you expect? Everything to be perfectly fine? Them tiptoe around the buildings? Come on, right? Like, watch out for the playground. That building yeah. looks important. That's got the H on it. You know, stay away. No, <laughs> yeah. I know. Not even uh, Fenway Park was spared. Like, yeah, no, just, no. I mean, especially oh, when he man. goes when he goes nuclear, it's mm-hmm. just like, all right, we're, we're done here, and ah. which is also very very epic. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, but you see, and even talking about nuclear, he was about to go nuclear anyways. But then mm-hmm. his, you know, like they said, his uh, relationship with Mothra, helping yep. push him to the edge so he could help save the world. I mean, I even mm-hmm. love seeing that because again, throwing it back to the old Godzilla stuff, there were times that these monsters would team up with Godzilla because the threat was so big. Yeah. And even that monster was like, yo, we, we gotta, we gotta get rid of this guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this guy's trouble. <laughs> yeah. And so that's where, and that's where it just, them throwing stuff back, I thought was, was really mm-hmm. good. Cause I think that's important for Godzilla fans. And then, and then let, let Godzilla fans, like what we're doing now, let us nerd out and educate other, other people to, yeah. to bring them on board. Like, I feel yeah. like that's really what they needed to do. The fun part, like you said, and piggybacking what you were saying about, you know, the first one to King of Monsters. And, you know, we've even had the conversations about, you know, the Transformers and stuff. Even like the first Transformers was cool and all, but like we still wanted more, you know, the Transformers. And then they finally got the recipe right, um, you know, with them later on. But here we are mm-hmm. with the King of Monsters. And like you said, yeah, critics, whatever, they're always going to bash this stuff because they don't, they're not, you know, fans of this, you know, sort of genre or these creatures and everything. But to have, the human yeah. inter- interaction was, it was good. You know, it kind of kept storyline moving and all that stuff. But to mm-hmm. see the monsters literally in every scene, pretty much, <laughs> was right. awesome. You know, to have them doing their thing, um, mm-hmm. or at least to have them involved somehow, would it, whether it be, you know, Mothra and the cocoon and all that stuff right. and doing this. And just when Godzilla runs up underneath, you know, in the the underwater place and they're all like, Oh, he's like, open the shields. And Godzilla's like, Oh, I was like, yes. You know, <laughs> just yeah. so things like that. Just seeing, you know, again, getting to see more and more of these creatures and understanding who and what they are um, in this new monster verse. And again, just letting them flex and destroy mm-hmm. things because we're kind of just a part of their world as you know, I'm sure right. we're about to get into, um, you know, the whole, how the hollow earth and all that stuff is being, brought into this and how mm-hmm. again all the kaiju are just coming out of the woodwork uh literally and figuratively yeah um but that was one of the things too you know like you're saying from the first one to king of monsters is just seeing these monsters just go at it and be you know the part of the film that we deserved and yeah you know we're driving around in a humvee with the orca and you know like i said you know we'll see some frequencies and stuff being played into <laughs> some of these storylines and 
you know, there we go. Um, yeah. bringing that into, you know, the story. But Yeah. Yeah, I know. And then that's the thing where it's just like, um, but I think people don't realize, especially like critics and stuff or people who just aren't like fans of this genre is what, which I really appreciated. They did in, um, uh, King of the monsters is that mm-hmm. they, they showed the humans like, we're helpless, but let's do what we can. Let's try to get people to safety. Let's try to get them out of the war path of these creatures. And mm-hmm. then at the very end, let's just partner up with Godzilla because right now he isn't bothering us. So let's get rid of the monster that wants to kill us all. You know. Right. <laughs> and so, um, so I like seeing, and I know people may not like that, but that's the part I liked because it was like, uh, what, what, what are we really going to do? You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially after they tried to use the oxygen destroyer, and Ghidorah just comes right out. And they yeah. find God. It's like, what else can you do as humans? Like, we got nothing. So mm-hmm. we might as well try to to team up and do those things. Right. Yeah, because you're not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> those guys are just too big. And, you know, we'll get into, I guess, like, because I'm like, oh, well, let's get into the anatomy of these creatures and blah, blah. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Ghidorah's healing factor and all that stuff. And, you know, mm-hmm. they all have, you know, that to, you know, the degree. But, like, he was just like, oh, whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something that uh, I know we've been going on here for 45 minutes, and we try yeah. to keep the videos at least watchable during the lunch hour. Um, oh, no, I got you. But uh, oh, hold on, almost done. Sorry, got kids or someone in there too. Um, but uh, but but yeah, we, we definitely have much more to dig into, and I want to continue doing these monster, you know, monster Mondays as we have. And this has been yeah. a good, I think, just quick overview of Godzilla. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe next time when when we start talking about uh the anatomies and what they do and what they bring to the table you know we we will bring in god king kong into that as well um mm-hmm. because he's he's a part of all this but i hope you guys have been able to enjoy this uh this you know for the most part brief history of godzilla and his background and i hope you guys enjoyed having eric on here thanks so guys continue hey, if yeah. i could Efren, uh because you know we're just kind of going through our experience and a little bit of dabbling in you know Mm-hmm. Godzilla's history and stuff. And like Efren said, the graphic novels and comics, if you guys want to go some quick light reading uh, real quick to get into Kong and Godzilla, because they're some of these new storylines are like tying into, you know, the monster verse that we got. So right. I would say look up uh, Kingdom Kong uh, and then Skull Island, Birth of the King. And then, of course, going into Godzilla, we got Godzilla Awakening, Godzilla Dominion and Godzilla mm-hmm. Act- Aftershock. And Efren, we might yes. need to read Aftershock before we do yes. round two of this. Um, cause yes. it gets into some of the mutos and who mm-hmm. Godzilla encounters and stuff and bringing him to, um, the two, you know, the King of the monsters and stuff like that, how he looks, the way he looks and stuff like that through there. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I, I think I have aftershocks. I think I've read it, but I'll need to brush up on it anyways. I have to go look for it. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, those things are good. And, and I know some people may not necessarily like what I have to go read and do all this stuff to understand everything. No, you don't have to, it just helps. So yes. that's all yeah, I want yeah. to say. Like you don't have to do these things, but if you want more history, if you want a little bit more knowledge, you can understand and appreciate a little more what's happening in the movies, doing stuff like that, reading those things, um, going into, go back into the old movies, um, try to see if you have friends who can borrow it from, or honestly, if you go on Amazon and just yeah. Google like classic Godzilla movies, some of them are like five, six bucks on there that or you can get. Like, just be on you know, TV, like what is it? Spike or whatever those silly yeah. channels are. They usually Godzilla marathon. And you're like, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, there's ways for you to to kind of get caught up and appreciate what's going on because, you know, which we will be doing uh, the week of Godzilla versus Kong coming out. Um, you know, we'll have Gary back on. We'll have Eric back on. Hopefully, we'll get that worked out with you, Eric, um, yeah, because we're having the big battle. And here's the thing. This is not the first time. I have to rewatch this. This battle, <laughs> King Kong versus Godzilla, has already happened once. And mm-hmm. we'll talk about this, and we'll talk about what we think is going to be happening in the new version. Uh, coming up remember so, your vegetables happened, but, kids <laughs> yes <laughs> and we would explain that joke later too if you don't get it yes <laughs> uh, but yeah so thank you guys so much for being with us thank mm-hmm. you uh, for this time of indulging us godzilla nerds and yeah, uh, hopefully we'll us. have some more education since this is part of our pop culture now and hopefully you guys can learn a little bit more yes. see you guys next time being with us thank you eric for being here Look thanks for having me to seeing y'all on the next Monster Movie Monday. We'll see you guys. See ya.